to order. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the presence uh, of the minority leader, Senator Frank Drilon, and I also note online uh, the presence of our majority leader, uh, Senator Mig Zubiri. Uh, I am expecting that more of our colleagues will be joining us during this morning's uh, hearing. And uh, Comsec, could you please uh, acknowledge the presence of our resource persons? Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, the committee would like to acknowledge the presence of the following. Uh, we have Chairman Sharp M. Abbas. We have Commissioner Marlon Casquejo. We have Commissioner Antonio Tico. We have Attorney Bartolome Sino Cruz, the Executive Director. Attorney Helen Aguila Flores. We have Attorney Margaret C. Ching. We have Attorney Maria Norina Tangaro Casingal. Then we have uh, Attorney Genesis Gatdula. We have Attorney Martin Yedo. Attorney Maria Leia Alarcon. Attorney Davina Blas Perez. Attorney Alan Francis B. Abaya. We have Director Esther Beliaflor Rojas. We have Attorney Ephraim Bagid. We have Director Sita Buena Casillon. We have, the, we have Director Jeannie Flororita. We have Director e Eden Bolo. Director James Arthur B. Jimenez. Attorney Esmeralda Amora Lagra. Attorney Siti Maimona Asiha, Asisa Tawagon. We have Attorney Sonia Bea We Losada. We have Miss Catherine Isip. Then uh, uh, that's all for now, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec, and uh, welcome to all our resource persons. Uh, the Chair also acknowledges the presence of Senator Kiko Pangilinan. Sen Kiko, thank you for joining us. Um, so, magandang umaga po, uh, fellow Senators, uh, to the Comelec family headed by Chairman Abbas and Commissioners Casquejo and Co. so far. Uh, Executive Director Sino Cruz, and also our resource persons uh, from the DBM. Sorry, Comsec, did you acknowledge the DBM resource persons? Technical staff. Yeah, uh, Madam Chair, we have a technical staff of the uh, DBM. We have Michelle Kalika. Thank, Thank you. you. Comsec, and uh, welcome to the DBM uh, resource person. Uh, dear colleagues, we are into the second year of the pandemic, and while we have made the headway in vaccination, the emergence of new virus strains can only mean that the COVID-19 pandemic may continue to pose a threat to our health, our way of life, and even to our right to vote. We've seen how it has caused sickness and death and untold economic sufferings for many Filipinos, while at the same time complicating how we prepare for and conduct our elections in 2022. In fact, because of the many lockdowns, Comelec had to suspend voter registration in many areas. And with the original deadline fast approaching, we fear that many eligible voters will miss the opportunity to choose our leaders in 2022 simply because they failed to beat the deadline to register. This potential disenfranchisement led Congress to pass a concurrent resolution to urge Comelec to extend the voter registration till 31st October 2021. And last Wednesday, yesterday, the Comelec, rather the Senate, approved Senate Bill 2408, which seeks to extend voter registration until 31 October 2021. I hope to hear something more positive from Chair Abbas along this line during today's briefing, as he did during our internal briefing uh, yesterday morning, when he told this representation that Comelec will consider extending the voter registration for one week for new registrants after the filing of the COCs from 1 to 8 October 2021. Your Senate Finance Subcommittee wants to see the readiness and preparedness of the agency going into 2022 with the challenge of the pandemic as the backdrop. As always, Comelec needs to convince us that the budget it seeks, including its request for an allotment increase under the current circumstances, is justified. For that, 
Comelec must be able to answer questions about its budget and address issues that may impact the conduct and results of the 2022 elections on May 9th, such as preventing voter disenfranchisement, the mode of length of time for the actual elections, and how it spends the allotment it has been given. With that, dear colleagues, we're now ready to listen to your budget presentation, after which, as has been the practice, our senators, based on their arrival or log-in time, beginning, as is our practice, with the minority leader, will have 10 minutes per round of questions. And, uh, dear colleagues, because we have another Blue Ribbon hearing this afternoon, uh, the chair hopes to be able to finish our hearing by 1 p.m. So you have the floor, Chair Abbas, for your presentation to our senators. Yes, Madam Chair, good morning. Good morning to uh, Senator Frank Dridloan, to Senator Panilinan, and all other senior staff of uh, the Senate, as well as the, Con uh, as well as the Comele. So to present Chairman, our... Chairman, uh, Majority yes. Leader Zubiri is also with us online. I, yes, I uh, would like to uh, greet also uh, Senator Zubiri. Uh, may we request, Madam Chair, uh, Director Alarcon, to present our budget. With your permission, Madam Mr. Chairman. Yes, Director, please proceed. Uh, I will now share my screen, uh, Madam Chairman. May, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a minute, Director. Yes, uh, uh, Minority Leader San Frank. Yes. Why can we not uh, let, we should be honored the man with the presentation of the chairman, not the bureau director, with all due respect. Very well taken, uh, Minority Leader. Chairman, may I uh, request you to do the presentation uh, to our subcommittee? Uh, Lisa, Please uh, give way, uh, Director Leia, uh, with all due respect also to you. Okay, Chairman, Director Leia, please, 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 please share the slides. Yes. Sign na po, Your Honor, because wala po sa akin yung slides. Yes, sir. Minsan nang sa isang taon kayo namin makakausap eh. Magbigyan <laughs> kami. Oo oh, naman. Ang mag <laughs> Apo, Apo. Amen. Agree, uh, San Frank. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, good morning uh, uh, once again. Uh, this is the National Expenditure Program of the Commission on Elections for the fiscal year 2022. Next slide, please. Okay. So we will discuss the accomplishments and details of our proposed budget for the 2022. Next slide, please. Okay. The NEP. Your honors are recommended for the fiscal year 2022 budget level in the a total amount of 26,728,529,000 for the Commission on Elections fiscal year 2022 requirements for ongoing programs, activities, and projects. To it, these are the, um, the details of our proposed budget. For the agency specific budget for the general administration and support operation of which 1.5 million and uh, for regular fund, regular program, the total amount is by 2 billion. Okay, so the total department budget, your honors, uh, the proposed budget is for 20, 26,728,529,000. Next slide, please. Next, next slide. Okay, quite. In, in the iba yung lumalabas, Director Leia. Director Leia. Tumising it yata yung ano, text messages sa uh, laptop. Delivery ata ng tanghalian yan eh, Madam Chairperson. <laughs> Posible nga, San Kiko. Lea, pakiayos. <laughs> okay. 
Director Lea, paki-correct na po yung screen para makaproceed yung presentation ni Chairman. Chairman, naghang po ba yung signal ni Director Lea? Meron bang ibang taga Comelec who can share the same slides for your presentation? FST, paki-ayos. All right, there we go. Okay. Yes, Your Honours, these are the uh, accomplishments of the COMELEC. Uh, we passed resolution number 10674 on the protocols on the conduct of the system of continuing registration of voters, institutionalizing the health and safety standards under the new normal. So the COMELEC uh, promulgated a new normal uh, uh, manual uh, for the conduct of uh, the 2022 national and local elections. Next slide, please. The honors, please. This is the uh, the statistics for the total number of registered voters covering the period of 2019 to 2021. For the period covered from August 1 to September 30, 2029, 29, we have 57,561,763. For uh, the coverage next uh, year, the, the following year, we, we increase it to 58 million. 232,190. And then the period covered from January 4 to June 30, 2021, uh, we already reached 61,103,000. Okay, balik. Okay. We reached uh, 61 million. 103 top <laughs> director Leia Paki Ayos. Mr. Chairman, while we're waiting na maayos yun, may, may update na po ba kayo para sa aming lahat tungkol sa extension? <laughs> yes, Your Honors. Uh, before, hello, Your Honor. Yes, Chairman. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, on the extension, Your Honors, uh, first of all, we would like to apologize for our polite uh, rejection of the request. Uh, I, we just want to uh, explain yung aming timelines, Your Honor. Uh, yung timelines po namin, talagang medyo masikip na. Uh, we really have to to do it. Yung, uh, meron kasi kaming mga immovable uh, dates like... Uh, December 1 to 15, na kung saan maglo-load po kami ng data, ng lahat ng data sa PCM. So that would be a immovable date of December 1 to 15. So ang matitira po sa amin, Your Honors, if uh, it would be extended to October 31, we only have one month to prepare. So ang pinakamalaking problema po namin, Your Honors, is yung pag-prepare ng POP, yung Project of Precincts. Because after na after the end of the registration, we will conduct a ERB hearing. So ito po yung one one week po yung ERB hearing, and then after which we will uh, the field offices will transmit the number of registered voters or the names of registered voters sa sa main office, and then the AFIS po namin yon your honors. So sa AFIS titingnan namin kung may mga double or multiple registrants. So after po nun, ibabalik namin sa field offices. So it will cost, I think, mga uh, two weeks. Two weeks po yon. So after which, uh, ipipipare na po ng field offices namin yung project of precincts. Meaning, ikakluster na nila yung mga presinto. So bawat barangay, uh, igugrupo nila either 1,000 or 800. 
per precinct and per barangay. Wala po kami problema yung owners doon sa maliliit na mga munisipyo. Ang problema namin yung mga highly urbanized like in NCR for example. Uh, Quezon City for example alone, uh, may mga barangay dyan na halos kalaki na ng probinsya. So na napakahira po yun for us your owners na kahunin. It will cost our people to I think pinakamabilis your owners two weeks to three weeks. And then hanapan nila ng after ng pag-grupo-grupo uh, pag ng mga uh, voters into precincts, hahanapan naman nila yan ng eskwelahan. So, yung eskwelahan naman, ang problema namin sa ngayon, maraming mga schools na ginamit as a, uh, as a voting, uh, as an isolation center. So, we will declug it and then uh, we will coordinate again to the LGU and the DepEd na lilinisin yon para sa magiging voting center. So, total po your honors sa field pag-prepare ng POP, we have minimum of three weeks. So, kung magiging October 31 po siya, medyo gahol po kami sa oras, your honor, to beat the December 1 to 15 loading of data. So, that is the main reason, your honor, kung bakit uh, we politely rejected the call for the extension. Another reason, Your Honor, is because yung mga tao namin, Your Honors, uh, sa ngayon po, madami na pong nagkakasikit sa mga tao namin. May mga casualties po kami. So, even the regional directors, at long regional directors namin nag-agaw nag buhay because of the COVID-19. And the remaining, uh, kung hindi sila, yung pamilya nila. Yung dito naman sa mga pest, your honors, ganun din, marami rin nagkasakit, marami rin kaming casualty. Sa e EOs naman, ganun din, EOs and EAs, even in Metro Manila, maraming na ICU dyan na mga election officers. So, yung totoo, your honors, natatakot din yung mga tao namin, but uh, wala po tayong magawa because that is a public service. But uh, as a human person, your honors, natatakot din po sila, lalo na ngayon na may penta. Kung if if we will uh, extend it for another one month, uh, panibagong exposure na naman yan sa kanila. Doon naman sa maliliit, Your Honors, ang nagka-problema kami because of the COVID din. Because of this registration, maraming mga field offices na nagsarado because sa isang munisipyo, halimbawa, dalawa lang yung tao namin. Kapag na-expose yung isa, magko-quarantine silang dalawa. So magsasarado yung isang munisipyo. Ang ginagawa namin yung honors, nag-augment kami from other municipalities. So nagkakataon sometimes, napaparalyze yung dalawang munisipyo, mag-augment naman kami ng mga tao. So sa makatawid your honors, uh, nahirapan din po yung aming field because of this registration. Mr. Ako Chairman, naman, honors, excuse me lang po ha. Yes, uh, Sen. Frank. So at bottom, the COMELEC is saying, with your permission, Madam Chair, if I may yes, interrupt the Chairman, the, co the COMELEC is saying, you cannot extend it beyond one week after October 8th. Is that what we're saying? Yes, Your Honor. If, if kami lang po yung masusunod. Yes, Your Honor, please. Yes. Kung, Your Honor, kung kami lang po yung masusunod, uh -huh. hihingi po kami ng paumanhin at makikiusap po sana kami sa inyo. Na yes. Po po, huwag na lang po i-extend. However, Your Honor, since meron ng bill, may naipasa ng bill at pwedeng maging batas po to, Wala po kami magawa yung honors, but to... Yes. Para, Wala pero po sumunod. naman, at, uh, Mr. Chairman, okay, kanina nakinig ako sa inyong presentation. As of December 30, 2020, <coughs> ang number of road registered voters is 58,232,190. Alright. As of June 30, <coughs> this year, June 30 of this year, ayan, uh, uh, 61,000 million. Uh, 61,103,654. Sa makatuwid, Mr. Chairman, there are only 2,871,514 registrants huh, between uh, the, the December 30, 2020 and uh, June 30, 2021. 
And okay, if you bring it back to 2019, there was barely an increase of 1 million 30,000, uh, 300,000. So roughly, uh, even assuming that we go back to September 2019, two years after you have owned, there were all, there, there's only a, there are only there's only an increase of roughly three million. According to the Philippine Statistics Authority, and correct me if I'm wrong, particularly Senator Pangilinan, because he's the one who has studied this. How many eligible registered, uh, how many eligible, uh, how many uh, citizens of our country are new vote, are considered new voters per PSA? If I'm not mistaken, about 12 million, is that correct, Senator Pangilinan? Thank uh, you, Kiko. 12, yes, 12 million more. The P PSA data is that 18 year old and above uh, population will be about 73.3 million. In okay, so 2020. 73.3 73.3 million, less uh, 61.1 million. That's roughly 12, 12, over 12 million that needs to be registered. And you have only registered 2.8 million. Isn't this a cause of concern, Mr. Chairman? Remember, remember that there is a law, huh? Republic Act 81. 89, which imposes the system of continuing registration. In other words, Congress, as a matter of policy, has ruled or has adopted a policy that there should be a continuing <laughs> registration and that the uh, registration of voters under Section 8 of the law, the registration of voters shall be conducted daily. And the only prohibition is that no registrations shall be conducted during the period 120 days before the regular election. According to the Supreme Court, the clear text of the law does decrease that voters should be allowed to register daily during regular offices, office hours, except during the period starting 120 days before a regular election and 90 days before a special election. And the Supreme Court further said, Congress itself has determined that the period of 120 days before a regular election and 90 days before a special election is enough time for COMLEC to make all the necessary pr preparations with respect to the coming elections. In other words, the, the Congress has already determined that except for 120 days before, there should be a continuing registration. You have no discretion to disregard this. The Supreme Court has already sustained this. I, I beg to disagree with, you, with Mr. Chairman, all those uh, circumstances you cited, because the Congress has already determined. And in fact, we are bending backwards by saying that, all right, we will have the registration up to October 31. But you even resist this because of the, the reasons that you have cited, which are not impossible to, to, to overcome. Uh, and then, moreover, with more reason is this Kilos Mayan case, uh, Kilos, Kilos Mayan versus Comedic, the, uh, in 2009. With more reason, it should apply today because of the pandemic. And please do not give us the excuse that your public people are, 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 are inadequate. Because in your budget today, I see a lot of, of professionals paying a budget for professional services, which I intend to examine later on. But just focusing on this registration, Mr. Madam Chair, I think the public is wrong. I want to put it bluntly. It is in the reliction of the duty imposed by the law to have a continuing registration. It is our humble submission, Madam Chair, that the COMELEC has no right to say this and that excuses, and therefore we will disregard the mandate of Republic Act 8189, as already affirmed in the case of Kilos Mayan versus COMELEC in 2009. There is no more discretion, we respectfully submit, Madam Chair, on the COMELEC to set limits on this. Uh, in fact, in fact, you should 
be thankful that we are working on a law which will put it up to October 31. Otherwise, you might have problems about violating express duty imposed to you by Congress. We, that's our submission, Madam Chair, and may request a comment from uh, from the chair of the, of the cabinet. And by the way, just one more matter. You know, when Commissioner Ampolocchio came before the CA, I really spread into the record the need for public to adopt a program to increase the uh, vote the, or to provide every opportunity for our new voters to register. And promises were made on the record. I will have to go back to this because promises were made on the record on, uh, on the um, uh, need to expand our voters' registry. But I see that today, the government is singing a different tune. Um, Madam Chair, may I have a comment of the chairman on this? Certainly, Sen. Frank. And the chair uh, recalls the same as Sen. Frank, that Commissioner Ampolocchio made commitments regarding that matter of ensuring the registration of first-time voters. So, Chair Abbas, could you please comment on the important points made by the minority leader about uh, the COMELEC's obligations under the law uh, with regard to uh, the Supreme Court ruling and then also in relation to the commitments uh, made by the newest member of the commission. Chair Abbas. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, with the indulgence of uh, the good senator, uh, after the 2019, Your Honors, we already opened the registration of registration. So even before pandemic, uh, na-open na po namin yung registration, patuloy-tuloy po yan hanggang ngayon. So hanggang September 30, tuloy-tuloy po yung registration namin. So hindi po kami, uh, except for the, nung nag-declare ng ECQ, No, 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 Mr. Start. Chairman, don't veer away from the issue. Under the law, you have an obligation on a continuing registration except 120 days before a national election. Are you complying with that duty by imposing a deadline of September 30, 2021? Yes, Your Honor. Ang it's 120 po. days before, that means until January. Y yes, Your Honors. Uh, after this 2019, we already started the registration, even before pandemic. Tuloy-tuloy po yun hanggang ngayon. So, uh -huh. ngayon, hanggang September 30 po yung... Uh, That's what, Mr. Namin. Chairman, I want you to justify. How do you justify the end line of September 30, 2021, when the law and as a policy of this Congress said you are to conduct a continuing registration under Section 8 of Republic Act 8189 until 120 days before? Mr. Chairman... I respect, with all due respect, it means you have no discretion but to continue the registration up to 100 and uh, before 180 days. Are you disputing that? Are you saying that you have the discretion, that withstanding this law, to limit the registration up to October uh, or up to September 30, 2020? Your well, Honours, oh. I, I think Your Honour, even before, hindi po kami ata inabot ng January. Kasi sa January pa lang, Your Honors, if we will uh, if we will follow January, for example, kung anong nakalagay sa batas, printing na po natin ng balota sa January. So, physically, Your Honor, imposible po yun to comply. That is why, uh, hindi, po, hindi po namin kaya yung January, magpaparehistro po kami. Except lang, if yes. we will register, well, pero sir, hindi sir, na siya masama. Mr. Honor, Chairman, Yes. The Congress has already decided on that. That is already beyond debate. The Supreme Court has already sustained that and has said that the, the registration shall be continuing consistent with uh, Section 8 and that the clear text of the decree of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the law uh, that allows voters to register daily mm -hmm. except 120 days before. So all the debates, all the circumstances is already uh, no longer applicable. This is the law. 
And are you telling us that you have the discretion to do otherwise? Yes, Your Honor. Ang, ang registration namin after that, hindi na lang siya masali dito sa election year. We do registration after, pero hindi na siya kasali because magka-cut off po kami for the 2022, this September, mag-ERB hearing kami ng October. So lahat ng ma-ERB namin na October, hindi na siya masali sa 2022 election. <laughs> I don't know what you're getting your arguments. The law is very clear. The law is very clear. The continuing registration and uh, decrease that Congress and Congress itself has determined that the period of 120 days before the election, regular election and 90 days before the special election is enough time for the public to make all the necessary preparations. Our respectful submission, Mr. Chairman, Madam Chair, is that there is no more discretion on the part of public. You should comply with this because failure to comply with this, if I'm in subject, is, is a, an action, actionable wrong. Thank you, Sen. Frank. So, Chairman, that's a very important uh, reminder given by the minority leader. Even the chair was reminded that that continuing registration is until 120 days before the election. So indeed, until January, lumalabas po napaka-resonable na ng appeal noon ng Kongreso, now uh, embodied in the bill we have filed and the joint resolution with the House and the Senate to extend at least until just October 31. So, and that would call into question, Chair Abbas, yung sinabi niyo nga na immovable dates of December 1 to 15. And just yes, to add one yes, final and argument. And, and then send people, yes. There were three elections, two or three elections in the past where the deadline for registration is October uh, 31 mm -hmm. of the election, of the year before the election. Uh, this is a reasonable request on the part of Congress. Just follow your previous practice. What you are stating to me today, what applicable three years ago? when you set the deadline of the registration on October 31. Why do you insist that it should be ended on September 30, 2021? Thank because we consider yes. that with all due respect as a grave abuse of discretion on the part of the Commonwealth. And as I said, we have legal remedies. Thank you, Sen. Frank. Sen. Kiko, before Chair Abbas again. Yes, just yes. Uh, before uh, Chairman Abbas uh, responds, uh, thank you, Ma Madam Chairperson. Uh, uh, magandang umaga, Chairman Abbas. Uh, uh, naintindihan ko yung sitwasyon regarding COVID at yung concern ng ating mga COMELEC uh, personnel at mga empleyado natatakot, nangangamba. Uh, at naunawaan ko na hanggat maari ay huwag natin na uh, Unless talagang necess 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 necessary, eh, huwag natin ina-expose yung ating mga uh, tao di ba, sa COVID. But in this case, I think uh, yung mga pangyayari kasi eh, kakaiba eh. No? Uh, Unang-una, sabi nga ni Senator Drillon, ang ating minority leader, ay noong 2019 tsaka 2016 elections, October 31 ang deadline ng registration. Ang COMELEC itinakda itong September 30 deadline kung walang pang COVID. Hindi ba? At sa panahon ng COVID, lalo na itong nakarang ano, halos anim na buwan ata. Walang registration. Bawal. Dahil nga lockdown. So ang daming oras ang hindi talaga naibigay at nailaan. At siguro ang pinakatotohanan sa baba na hindi natin pwedeng i-ignore. Ang haba ng mga pila ng ating mga kababayan na nagpaparehistro. Meron po isa, nine, o, nine hours siyang nakapila para lang makarehistro. So kung uh, susumahin natin, totoo, concern natin ang interes, welfare actually, uh, health uh, concerns ng ating COMELEC. Pero yung mga nine hours na pumipila, kailangan din, concern natin yun na expose sila. Hindi po ba? Sa kakapila nila. E baka kasi 
kung i-extend natin, mababawasan yung pila. Hindi ba? Uh, hindi magkakaroon ng ganitong madras, mabibigyan din, mapuprotektahan din yung ating mga taga-comelec at lahat. So sana, uh, maunawaan din ninyo yung sitwasyon sa, uh, ng ating mga kababayan. Ako po ang principal uh, author ng uh, Senate Res Resolution 851, pati yung joint resolution, dahil nga nakita natin ang uh, realidad sa baba. So, and, uh, and so yun ang kahilingan natin. Uh, again, ulitin natin, your September 30 deadline was decided prior to COVID. Thank you. I think uh, it demands a revisiting, uh, or requires a revisiting of this policy given that so many have been unable to register precisely not because it's their fault, but because the lockdowns uh, you know, were declared by government itself and you had to shut down your, your offices. So we hope a re any reasonable, uh, I'd like to think, public servant will. Ano ba naman yung isang buwan? Tatlong linggo na lang nga eh. Kasi uh, sabi nga ninyo, i-extend na ninyo ng isang, isang linggo. O edi gawin nun yung tat... Diba? Let's meet halfway. You want one week, we want four weeks, we want, you know, we're asking for another three weeks. I think that is, that is a good middle ground, hindi po ba? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Madam Chairperson, thank you, Chairman uh, Abbas. Yes, thank sir, you, Sen. Kiko. Chair, we really feel so strongly about this. Let me hear again the minority leader bago kayo mag-responde yes, sa amin. Yes, Sen. Alam niyo po, Mr. Chair, <coughs> if I am to pursue to its logical end your resolution setting September 30 as a deadline for registration, that is a form of voter suppression because, in effect, uh, given the circumstances, as cited by Senator Pangilinan, given the circumstances, the actual cir the circumstances of a, uh, a pandemic, when our voters could not go out and register by transportation van pa, eh, hindi na nga makalabas, wala pang masakyan. And this is not their own making. This is um, a circumstance that is beyond their control. And to me, it is clear that your resolution in this context cannot be enforced because it is a clear voter suppression regulation. You suppress the right of the voter to vote. And that is a cardinal sin uh, in our democratic system of government, Mr. Chair. So we appeal to you. Your, your reliance on your resolution is out of place. In my humble opinion, it is illegal and in violation of your constitutional, of the Constitution and the decisions of the Supreme Court uh, uh, interpreting our pertinent uh, election laws. So we submit them, Madam Chair. Salamat, uh, Sen. Frank. Chair, paano na? Mabigat po yun. How ironic kung Commission on Elections ay maging daan ng voter suppression. And then to restate yung, uh, yung uh, appeal upon appeal, no very strong appeal ni Sen. Kiko. Pwede nga bang the other, yesterday, Chair, sabi nyo compromise ang ino-offer nyo. Pwede bang ang compromise ay tulad ng sinabi ni Sen. Kiko na let the registrants or let COMELEC concentrate on the filing October 1 to 8 and then extend it na po from 9th uh, October till 31 kasi willing naman na kayo to extend by a week. So pwede bang for three weeks na hanggang katapusan. So please uh, Chair Abbas. Yes Sir Honor, with all your respect po. I just want to answer muna yung uh, Senator Frank. Uh, per RA 8189 po the definition of registrations include not only just the registration of the qualified voter, but it includes the ERB hearings and the inclusion in the book of voters. So, hindi lang yung actual na pagrehistro. Kasama po doon sa bilangan yung mga ERB hearings and yung pag-prepare ng book of voters. Kasama po yun sa 120 days. Sa Kabataan Party List versus Comelec naman po, Ang nakalagay doon, the Supreme Court ruled that the 90 to 120 day period is not mandatory. So yun po yung yun po yung uh, 
sinusunod po namin na jurisprudence sa ngayon so that uh, uh, pwede po natin siya kasi kung susundin mo nga imposible nga na by January magre-register pa kami at the same time magpi-print na pa ko man ng balota I do not want to argue sir ha, pero I just want to find yung point namin with all due respect po Now doon naman po sa sinabi ni Senator Pangilinan alam niyo po kasi kung meron lang sana kaming time to be honest with you, kung meron lang kaming leeway of time, hindi na namin po hintayin na hingi po po kayo. Ibibigay po namin yan. Oo. Kaso nga lang, wala po talaga kaming time, your honors. Medyo delikado po talaga. That is why, yung in-offer namin na one way, meron pa po kaming ihingin na kung po pwede, new registrants lang. At, para, at uh, kwan lang yun, mga yung uh, magpapareactivate hindi na kasamang transfer. Kasi kung isasama namin yung owners, hindi talaga namin kakayanin. Yung December 1 to 15. That is why ipa, uh, mawalang galang na po talaga. One week lang po talaga ang kaya namin ibigay. Oo. Yun lang po. Ah, kasi mahirap mag-commit your owners na papalpak kami in the end. Kasi in the end po kami yung masisisi. In, in, kung yan lang na request your owners, ibibigay namin. Ano, ano lang man yan na ibigay namin po sa inyo. Hindi na namin kayong hintayin kumingi. Pero kaso nga lang yung honors, uh, as we already mentioned, medyo hirap na kami sa timeline sa honors. Yun yung reality. Yun yung yeah. yung reality. Let, me, opo, let me call again send Frank and send Kiko. Send Frank, please. Send Frank, nakamute kayo. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may, if I may, if I may, can I propose something? Can I propose oh, the indulgence of uh, oh, my oh, colleagues? Oh, oh. The can... Oh, yeah. Baka you can make a best effort. Yes, oh, oh, oh. Ito yung proposal po namin. Uh, kung okay sa inyo, Your Honor, regardless of the outcome of the bill that has been passed by two houses of Congress, extend na po namin ng one week. Automatic yung extension. Extend namin ng one week after filing, then hintayin po namin kung merong batas. Kung merong batas, Your Honor, wala kaming choice but to one at hanggang October 31. Pero i-open po namin na yung one week. Your Honor, please. Yeah. Hindi iba yon sa original talaga. offer nyo. Ah. Hindi, Sige hindi, po, pero na. sandali lang po. Pakinggan na ko muna si Nasen Frank and si Sen yeah, Kiko ulit. Depende lang, Mama, kasi yung yeah. offer namin, uh, depende kung tatanggapin nyo hindi. So ngayon, i-assure na namin kayo, Your Honors, for our courtesy and respect. I-extend na namin for one week after filing. Pero okay. yung sa October 31, yeah, yung, ihintayin po namin kung merong batas, susundin po na. Pero doon yung makita yung owners na wala na kami talagang luxury of time. Otherwise, yung owners, mabubililyaso na po talaga ang preparation namin. <laughs> Sige, Chair. Yun Send yung Frank. Yung and Pero kung hindi lulusot yung owner, at least nag-offer kami yung owners from the bottom of our heart. Sige, Chair, kami na muna ulit. Send Frank, please, and then send Kiko. Yes, just very quickly. I am saddened by the statement of the Chair of the Commonwealth na kung may pundo lang ang extension, ibibigay po namin yan. Mr. Chairman, it is not for you to give. Hindi po pinamibigay yan karapatan ng taong bayan na magparehistro at bumoto at nagpa siya ang kongreso na patuloy continuing registration until 120 days before a national election. There is no discretion granted to you by Congress. And what you are insisting on is a clear voting suppression rule or regulation. And pag-isipan niyo po na gusto, uh, sa akin po, labang sa batas ang inyong ginagawa at nagbibigay na kami sa, sa Kongreso. Resolution na muna, pero hindi nyo pinapansin ang batas na aming ipinasa until October 31, uh, although under the law and under the Supreme Court decision, may, may obligasyon kayo to open the registration up to 120 days before the national election. Sa inyo po yan, at hindi ko po tinatanggap na pagbibigay ang gagawin nyo. Tungkulin nyo pa yan, obligasyon nyo yan, na i-extend ang registration. Maraming salamat. Kung may nagbibigay, ang kongreso po for setting it on October 
Salamat. Salamat. Uh, San Kiko. Baka pwedeng, thank you Madam Chairperson, baka pwedeng ipaliwanag dun sa atin ni Commissioner Abbas, ni Chairman Abbas. Bakit po nung December, nung uh, October, ah sorry, bakit po nung uh, 2013 elections na automated at yung 2016 elections na automated din, eh October 31 yung deadline. Bakit noon kaya? Hmm. Bakit ngayon parang imposible? Hindi, hindi, uh, pasensya na po Mr. Chairman pero are you saying lalo lumalala ang kapasidad ng COMELEC na dati kaya, nil, kaya ninyong gawin ng October 31 ang deadline ngayon hindi na ninyo kaya uh, despite almost half a year na hindi kayo nagpaparehistro parang, parang masyado naman atang uh, hindi nabibigyan ng respeto yung karapatan ng ating mamamayan na makapagrehistro so can you please explain why could you do it in two previous elections and now you cannot? Chairman one Abbas, one month. We're not, we're not talking of two months. We're not talking of three months. We're talking of one month. In fact, three weeks na lang. Ang inihingi namin, one month. Ang willing ninyong bigay, e eh, one week. Eh, ba't di tayo magkita sa three, three weeks? I don't think it is an unreasonable request, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Uh, Madam Chairperson and uh, agree uh, ako yung nagtataka bakit bakit napakatik di ba ba't nagmamatigas ang COMELEC at uh, iniklian pa yung voter registration sa gitna ng pandemya na hindi makapag-register yung ating mga kababayan sana naman parang hindi na reasonable ito ang ating uh, ito ang ating pananaw uh, sana naman uh, mali tayo at uh, may pakita natin sa ating mga kababayan na ang COMELEC marunong makinig, nirerespeto ang uh, karapatan ng bawat mamamayan, nakikita yung napakahabang pila na siyam na oras pumipila ang ating mga kababayan para nais makapagrehistro. Sana naman dinggin ang COMELEC itong uh, kagustuhan ng ating mga kababayan na makapagrehistro. Salamat yes, sa inyo. Yes, so, Chair Abbas, bakit yeah. kaya nyo noon, ngayon hindi nyo na kaya? At kung kaya nyo noon, siguro kaya nyo ngayon. Yes, Madam Chair. May, may refer, Madam Chair, sa, kay Ko Marlon Casqueo, kasi siya yung head ng steering. To explain lang, Your Honors, kung bakit may pagkakaiba. Ko Marlon, please. All right, with the indulgence of San Kiko. Commissioner Casqueo, please. Yes, uh, but here, uh, may... May I be allowed to share my screen, just a few slides, so that uh, it will be easier for us to uh, follow what I am uh, going to discuss. All right, please uh, present those slides. And then uh, with the indulgence of my colleagues, after uh, the, the Chair Abbas's uh, maybe final comment on the presentation, we go back to the budget presentation, tapusin lang. And then before we come back to this discussion, because I'm sure all of us in the Senate are not satisfied with the state of the discussion on this, I may call it prejudicial issue so far. So please Mr. proceed, Mr. Commissioner Casquejo. Yes, Sen Kiko. Before, before the response of Commissioner, uh, we, we should also consider perhaps deferring uh, action on the COMELEC budget uh, and give them time to uh, discuss uh, again uh, uh, their position uh, and bank because I understand it's an end bank decision and I, I wouldn't want them uh, uh, not to have that opportunity to sit down and thoroughly discuss the position of Congress. I don't think they have had the chance to again meet end bank to discuss the issue of extension. I think what has happened is uh, they they did meet and bank, decided no extension, after which hindi na nag-convene ulit to tackle that item, despite the recent developments in both houses of Congress. So maybe we can, we, we can consider deferring the presentation and action on the COMELEC budget, give them the chance to do an end bank uh, debate, discussion, and then come back to us. Uh, I, I'm not moving yet, Mr. Uh, I understand, person, but I am presenting that as a as a possible option to be able to 
hopefully find a win-win situation. I, 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 I would like to support the COMELEC, but in this, in this matter of voter registration, the rights of voters come first. Uh, voting is the bedrock of any democracy. Uh, and this is anti-democratic, to say the least, uh, to disenfranchise over 12 million who are still, who are eligible but are not registered. And I hope, I pray, that the change of heart might happen when they have that opportunity to discuss and bank. Because of recent, the most recent developments mm. of the last two weeks, I, I would like to think that would merit at the minimum, an end bank convening and discussing and debating. Uh, after all, we are a democracy, and uh, and uh, you know these matters should be deliberated uh, and discussed thoroughly, and not just ram down our throats. Regardless. Thank you, Sen Kiko. Uh, the chair thanks you for your support uh, for the budget of the Comelec in principle, but definitely. Uh, such a motion uh, is a, a valid motion to be made by any member uh, of our uh, Senate here at this hearing, uh, especially because this is indeed uh, a prejudicial question for not just those of us present in the hearing, but our other colleagues uh, in the chamber as well. Uh, the Anbank has told us that they have met twice. And perhaps, who knows, maybe third time will be the charm if they will convene a third and final time on this very important issue. Maybe we will finally see a win-win situation. So with the indulgence of my colleagues, uh, we will just have the uh, presentation of the response of Commissioner Casquejo to the last question of Sen Kiko and Sen Frank. And then the chair will entertain uh, a motion to defer uh, the budget of uh, the COMELEC, if that is the desire of the committee. So, Commissioner Casquejo, could you please just uh, respond on behalf of the commission to the latest question of uh, the senators? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. With the indulgence of the, the chair uh, and uh, commissioners uh, and other uh, members of this uh, committee, and other Delilon Senator Kiko. Uh, it's just a short presentation. Uh, we would just like to show. Uh, the, 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 the actual data that we have right now. As being the head of the steering committee, ako po yung uh, talagang uh, naapektohan with regards to this. But however, we are not arguing with you. Uh, okay, we just let, uh, we, we respect the wisdom of the, the Senate. With regards I'm sorry, to Commissioner Casquejo. Akala ko sasagutin niyo po yung tanong na bakit nung 2013 at 2016 yes. nakaya na yung magparehistro hanggang October at bakit hindi na kaya ngayon? Or in fact, kung kaya niyo noon, kaya niyo siguro ngayon. Will that be what you will be answering, Commissioner? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair, but right. I would like to give some uh, data uh, so okay, that I can for us to understand, uh, Madam Chair. Okay. With regards to our historical data uh, for the last 2019, we have 61 million and we reduced it to 54 million because we were able to cleanse about 7 million for failure to vote in uh, consecutive two consecutive elections, our do double and multiple registration and APs. So as of now, uh, Madam Chair, we have uh, around 61 million, but there are still 2,722,000 on process, meaning it is subject to ERB. So, uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng 63 million for this 22, 2022 national and local elections. Hindi lang po tayo 61 million. Okay. Uh, next slide, that will be for our, yung sinasabi kanina with regards to the PSA voting population and number of registered voters. Totoo po, hindi natin nakukuha talaga yung number of even in 2010, the previous elections up to 2019, the PSA 57 million were able to register only 15 million. For the 2022, as of the date of the PSA, we have 72 million, that is correct. And we were able to register 63 million, so that will be around 9 million. If you notice with the data, nakita ninyo yung graph, talagang hindi talaga natin nakukuha yung PSA projected uh, voting population as compared to number of registered voters. For, for the additional registered voters, new hindi kasama itong transfer, we were able to cater 5,309,955 despite of the COVID 
suspension uh, for six months, I guess, uh, starting March, April, May, and June, July, August, and we resume by September, we were able to cater 5.3 million new registrants approved by the ERB. Hindi pa po kasama dito yung uh, pending before uh, the new, uh, after September 18. Meron po po tayong pending. So it will reach about 6 million uh, new registrant. So if you try to look at our target in every election year, we were able to get the target. In 2010, we have a target of 5.6 million. We're able to register at 6 million. For 2013 and until 2022, medyo malit yung target namin, 4 million, but we reached the bridge of 5 million, including the new registrant, which I mentioned earlier, we will be uh, getting a new registrant of 6 million. Okay. Now, if we try to look at the fight... Mr. Mr. President, just on that point... Yes, excuse just, me, Commissioner. Just, yes, and Kiko. Yes, just on that point of a target of 4 million. We already raised this in the Committee on Electoral Reforms in a previous hearing, bakit ang baba ng target, 4 million, eh, ang, re, ang datos nga natin, eh, labing tatlong million, labing apat. Eh, at that time, I think, labing anim na million yung hindi rehistrado. Tapos target nyo, 4 million. Hindi ba? Parang masyado, namang, masyado naman nating binababaan ng ating mga target. Sabi nga nung professor ko sa... College of Law, the late uh, Arturo Balbastro, who is the uh, Kasimanwa of my our minority leader. Mm -hmm. so, if you want to be a priest, you should aim to be a bishop. <laughs> so if yes. you don't become a bishop, you will end up as a priest. <laughs> but if you only aspire to be a priest, sabi nga niya, you might end up just being a sacristan. <laughs> uh, yung, uh, with all due respect, mababa yung target given the universe of uh, unregistered voters. Mm -hmm. Thank you, San Kiko. San Frank, please, before our commissioner. Uh, San Frank, naka-mute kayo. And just to add, can you go back to that uh, previous slide? Slide, please. Look there. at this. You are the one who set your target at 4 million 43,092. And then you register 5 million. And you're saying that you have exceeded your target, which in the first place, kayo rin po ang gumawa. You could have made a target 1 million, and you made it 5 million, five times more efficient. But, you know, we don't buy that. Because per the report of the PSA, our uh, potential voters is... 73.3 million as against if you if as against a registration of 61 million 12 million will be potentially deprived of the right to vote this is a clear voter suppression regulation which uh, already restricts access to vote to vote especially during this time so I'm sorry, but, you know, I, I, I don't buy the argument that you have exceeded your target, as you're trying to show. Because in the first place, kayo naman po ang ng target yun. At sa akin po, sa akin, maliwanag ang batas, continuing registration until four months before the election. Tapos na po ang debate dyan. Hindi na po pinag you know, po ang batas, you know, po ang reglamento until we revise it or until the Supreme Court says it is illegal. That is the rule that stands. For an orderly governance, we have a policy making body, and unfortunately, that policy was set already by Congress. And the Commonwealth, if I may, with all due respect, has no right to revise that by imposing October 31 or September 30. In fact, October 31 is already a revision yes. of by Congress of its previous policy. We have the right to do that. But Commander, like Mr. Madam Chair, has no right mm -hmm. to change the policy that we have set, uh, especially, especially that it's tantamount to a voter suppression. Such our submission, Madam, Madam Chair. And I join, I join the uh, 
manifest emotion of uh, Senator Pangilinan that, that we should defer this to allow the other senators to examine the budget more closely and have their inputs on this uh, totally illegal uh, resolution setting a deadline of September 30 for the registration. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, San Frank. Are you already making that motion at this point? Yes. In our You're already making that motion. So, uh, and I'm sure there is a second from San Kiko, who mentioned first mentioned that earlier. And uh, I don't hear an objection from the majority leader. Uh, uh, so I apologize, Commissioner. Uh, I will no longer ask you to complete your answer to the question. The chair was still waiting para dun sa sagot na bakit no mga nakaraang election years na kayanan magparehistro hanggang at least October 31. So bakit hindi kaya ngayon? So the chair um, uh, will suspend this hearing. The... Uh, deliberation or the consideration of the budget of the Commission on Elections being uh, deferred. And uh, the chair enjoins the COMELEC through its chair, Abbas, na kung maari po at tingin ko po ay nangaikina, kailangan makapag-unbank discussion muli ang uh, Commission for a third and last time, bearing in mind yung mga sinabi ng mga senador na by law, Dapat ay continuing registration hanggang 120 days before a general election. May jurisprudence din uh, affirming that. May commitment on records a commission on appointments ni Commissioner Ferolino as regards this matter. Uh, the, the committee supports the uh, budget of COMELEC in principle pero uh, hinihingi talaga ang hinihingi ng karamihan ng mga senador na dinigin yung naunang appeal ng Senado na pagkatapos ng priv speech ni Sen Kiko ay naging uh, commit, uh, joint resolution ng dalawang kapulungan at kahapon lang ipinasa na naming uh, paano ka lang batas sa Senado. And we heard from the House through the Speaker they will file uh, a companion measure na uh, hindi ito pagbigyan pero tumupad dun sa mandato ng komisyon na i-extend ang registration ngayong taon at least until October 31. So uh, salamat uh, Chairman Abbas at sa buong Comelec family sa ating uh, DBM resource persons. Marami salamat uh, kina San Frank, San Kiko and uh, I believe the majority leader still online. Uh, so for this moment, uh, the consideration of the COMELEC budget is deferred and uh, this hearing is suspended. Maraming salamat po sa lahat and uh, ingat po and stay healthy everyone. Uh, Chair, we'll need to keep in touch about this. Salamat San Kiko, salamat San Frank.